One of the richest people in the world is Warren Buffett. Is he cheap? He's one of, one of many billionaires who until recently gave very little to charity. He used his money to try to make more money. He said he'd give it away when he died. His fellow billionaire, Ted Turner, told me Buffett was being cheap. He should give some away now. Turner had just made a big splash by giving a billion dollars to the U.N. And now he said he wanted to shame other rich people into giving more. What he said is patently stupid. That was businessman T.J. Rogers' answer to Turner's bragging about his U.N. gift. What he should do is take his money and invest it. And he can't help people any other better way than to invest it and to have the companies and buildings and plants that are created with this investment create jobs and wealth and products for other people. Really? Is it better if a money maker uses his money to make more rather than give to charity? I threw, I think so, and I threw that question back to Ted Turner. If Bill Gates says, look, I'm good at making money. What, I serve people. Ridiculous. I mean, you know. I tried to argue this with Ted Turner, but he wasn't well, buying it. Am I wrong in thinking that I'm happy if Bill Gates gives nothing to charity? But wouldn't you be happier if he did? What are you, but just hear what me are you out. Hear, beating hear me. on me about? You're just another, this is why people don't like newsmen. I'm a newsman too. I know your dirty tricks. Yes, all right. There's nothing more to say. Goodbye. I'm walking off the set. Since he didn't want to talk about it, let's take that same question to economist Ben Powell. He runs the Free Market Institute at Texas Tech. So. Ben? I'm not bothered if they, they don't give more of it away. They make their money by making our lives better. So they are helping people by making a profit. And often that's the best way they can go about helping people. And when they make a profit and they hire people, those jobs live on for years. And people use it to educate their kids and feed their family. It, there's a multiplier. These guys may not even be good at charity. We know they're good at making money. I think they should stick to what their specialty is. It's not about their, their motives, John. It's about the results from it. When they're pursuing profits in the marketplace, it leads them to do the very things that we want them to do to benefit others. Now, of course, the real reason for this is them creating the products and services that make our lives better. But as a byproduct, they also create jobs that make other people better off. And this is often the best way that they can go about making society better. It's what's fundamentally responsible for the high standard of living that we enjoy in this country. And yet, most of them, I would say, don't feel good about all the wealth they create in their business and they guiltily give charity, talk about giving back. I mean, even Bill Gates, who's now working full time on charity, he's done so much to make our lives better with his company and his charity. He says he thinks most charity has to come from government. A lot of the money that is supporting these, these causes is coming from the private sector, from people like you, and less from governments. No, governments are the backbone of this. No, no, no. Bill Gates has it all wrong. He's, a, he's good at computers. He's not good at social policy. Just last week, I had a, a research paper presented in my seminar series here about the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. And what happened afterwards, there was no FEMA to rush in and botch things. Instead, it was private charity and civil society organizations that banded together and helped get people out of the city who lost their homes, who brought in new shelter for them, who brought in clothing. And judging from what I was hearing in that research, it worked a heck of a lot better than when we get FEMA in there ordering people where they can and can't go and botching the whole process. Uh, a recent edition of Forbes magazine, their richest people list, features big philanthropy. So they're now rating billionaires by how much they give and kind of warmed my heart. It's great. Let's have a competition among absurdly rich people on helping others rather than just buying jets and yachts. There's certainly nothing wrong with people giving money to causes that they think are valuable. Not every good or service is going to be produced for profit. Some of it can come from this segment of society, and I think it's fine that we recognize that as long as we don't demonize those who aren't doing it and think that there's something wrong with them pursuing their profits because there's not. That ultimately makes us better off, too. There are these tycoons from previous years, like Cornelius Vanderbilt and John D. Rockefeller, and people vilify them as robber barons and say, well, they did some charity work, but they were evil robbers. 
No, they fundamentally transformed the lives of Americans in the 19th century and raised all of our living standards. Rockefeller brought us oil and made profits in doing it. And by the way, he probably also is responsible for saving the whales because he pushed down the price of oil so much it was no longer profitable to hunt whales to extinction. Henry Ford comes in and builds automobiles a little bit later and makes them cheaper for people. It didn't matter that his motives was profits. The result was that he made automobiles affordable for average middle class Americans who had never had an opportunity to do that before. The same is true of most of these so-called robber bearers of the late 19th and early 20th century. Thank you, Ben Powell.